going to talk about mannose binding lectin or MBL and C-reactive protein. Um, so mannose binding lectin we will discuss first. What it is is a collectin that's in tissue in plasma. Collectin in tissue and plasma. It binds mannose residues, mannose residues on glycoproteins of carbohydrates. So I'll draw that out actually for you. So make it a little easier. So if you have your carbohydrates in green right here, a bunch of carbohydrates here, like this. Then you have your mannose binding lectin. So we have a bunch of circle guys here, like that. Okay, and what it, they are doing is kind of extending out to their central area here. So this is your mannose binding lectin. And this is your carbohydrates in, in uh, green there. Um, so how does a human cell not get... Um, Oh, so what the mannose binding lectin does is it activates the complement cascade. And I know I haven't made a video on the complement cascade yet, but I will be. So probably by the end of today or tomorrow. But what they do is activate complement. So we'll know what that is soon. But how does a human cell um, um, not get this mannose binding lectin bound to the carbohydrates on it? Right, because um, the glycoproteins or carbohydrates that it binds to, it can bind to bacteria, fungi, or viruses, right? So like HIV, cryptococcus, salmonella, listeria, all of these different things it can bind to. Um, so what a human cell does is, I will draw our human cell maybe in purple right here. So this is our human cell. And then if we have our glycoproteins and carbohydrates right here sticking out, and this mannose binding lectin it's like, ooh, nice, I want to bind to you. It actually won't see this. And why doesn't it see it? Because humans have, because our immune system is so smart, what are called sialic acid residues that cover and hide the mannose residues. So if there's a little residue there and a residue there, this guy is going, oh, crap, I can't see anything anymore. So I'm not going to bind to you. I'm going to go bind to this bacteria over here, salmonella, let's kill this, right? So that is how human cells protect themselves from the uh, complement cascade pathway. Now, what about C-reactive protein? What is C-reactive protein? So it is a protein, so it's not a collectin, it's a protein that is found in tissue, fluid, and plasma. So this is fluid as well, tissue, plasma, and what it binds is the phosphatidylcholine and pneumonococcal polysaccharide. So I will try and spell this out here. Phosphatidylcholine. And forgive me if that is wrong. It looks awful. Or the pneumono, pneumo, pneumococcal. Pneumococcal. Pneumococcal? I forget. Pneumo. Yeah, it's pneumococcal. And that's probably not two seats there. Forgive me if these are spelled wrong. Um, but what that does is activates the complement cascade via IgG FC receptor binding. So an Ig molecule just looks like this, and it's going to bind the FC region. This would be the Fab region or your variable region. This is your FC region. Okay, and we'll learn more about that in other videos. But those are what those two things do. Um, so they're kind of involved in activating the complement cascade, um, which eventually forms what's called the MAC attack complex. And that just kind of looks like a bunch of circles like this. And we will talk about what the MAC attack complex is, but here's actually what it looks like under an electron microscope. 
Um, actually, the middle would actually be black, so I shouldn't have done that. So the middle will be black like that. Um, but yeah, so that is what it, it eventually does, and we'll learn more about that. But the mannose binding lectin, that's how it binds to glycoproteins or uh, carbohydrates, and humans have sialic acid residues. I will write that out just for your reference. Oops, can't do that in black. And you sialic acid.